exclusive presentation of USC Upstate Athletics in association with Entercom Upstate Radio. I'm sitting at midcourt, and the last time around, the wave took out half of my Coke, and it's coming again. We, the fans, must stop this wave and protect our Coke. It's still coming. Cheerleaders, fire the t-shirt guns. Buzzer guy, distract them with buzzing. Wolf, howl. Hold on! Looks like we did it. Nice job, everybody. Coca-Cola, open happiness. There's a reason why USC Upstate is one of the fastest growing universities in South Carolina. Promoting excellence in academics, student life, and athletics, USC Upstate offers 40 majors and is nationally recognized for its schools of business, nursing, and education. The Spartans compete in NCAA Division I as part of the Atlantic Sun Conference with 17 teams. Learn more at uscupstate.edu or call 503-5000. USC Upstate, where excellence expands across the upstate of South Carolina and beyond. Live from Buffalo Wild Wings, it's the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show. Get the inside scoop on Spartans <laughs> basketball from head coach Eddie Payne and the voice of the Spartans, Phil Cox. The Upstate Basketball Coaches Show is presented by Coca-Cola of Spartanburg, Enterprise rent a -Cut, the Jeff Clark Nationwide Insurance Agency, College Point, USC Upstate, and Buffalo Red Wild Bob. Wings. Tweet us at Upstate <laughs> Spartans. Now, here are Coach Payne and Phil Cox. Well, we are obviously not at Buffalo Wild Wings tonight. We instead come to you from inside the Hodge Center here on the campus of USC Upstate for this edition of the, of the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show. My name is Phil Cox, along with the head coach of the Spartans, Eddie Payne. As an, uh, some more snow has uh, moved our location here tonight. And um, Coach, we had to change the schedule up a little bit and play in a lot of games in a short period of time. And a uh, pretty successful road trip, went in two or three on the road. Uh, with wins over Northern Kentucky and East Tennessee State just last night. It's quite a trip. I mean, we were gone six days. Um, that's a long time to be on the road with a group of youngsters. And fortunately, we like each other. Right. And so it was a good trip. We had a pleasant trip. Uh, you know, we had three good games, two of them wins, and one of them was a disappointing loss. But we. Um, Lipscomb played real well at the end of the game. It was kind of a strange game. They scored 14 field goals in the second half, and eight of them came within a four-minute span. So mm. To start, two minutes to start, two minutes to finish the game, and um, so you know they made some tough plays and they they won the game. Uh, the Northern Kentucky game, compared to the Lipscomb and East Tennessee game, seemed a little nondescript to me. It's almost yep. like you don't remember a great deal about it because right. it was a, a, a workmanlike, steady type of grinded out game. And then uh, last night we had an exciting game and uh, with a lot of big plays and a lot of really nice performances and, and, and one at East Tennessee State. So it was a productive six days and a long six days. And then we get back and we have, you know, Mother Nature's snowing a lot and it's going to snow some more evidently so um, you know basketball season is always interesting keeps you know, I know for us as coaches and players it's a very very uh, grueling uh, busy time for us as it as the trip is said and done upstate now <coughs> 15 and 11 8 and 5 in the conference coach you're uh, third in the league now with some shifting going around with North Florida and Lipscomb and teams like that um, we'll talk a little bit more about the past three games in depth, but um, obviously in this level of basketball, uh, conference standings and, and seedings mean a lot, especially with the new format of the tournament and playing at home, things such as that. So, um, And all of this without Ty Green. You, you lose your second leading score and have a lot of guys step up. Fred Miller, I believe that was a conference high, maybe a season high for Fred uh, with the other night versus uh, East Tennessee State. So the uh, guys just continuing to produce for you, especially in the backcourt and in the front court, Glenn and, and Craig, but both with double-doubles last night. Well, you know, Ty went out and we changed our rotation. Guys have stepped up and played well. Fred uh, probably has benefited from a minutes perspective mm -hmm. more than anybody, and he's produced. He's played well. Um, and uh, I, would, I, would, I would guess that would be a career high for assist. I don't know that he's... A, no, excuse me. He had nine assists uh, uh, this year, right? At Northern Kentucky, yep. 
So he had four turnovers. So he only had one turnover in this game, eight assists, one turnover. So he stepped up. And uh, Mario Blessing stepped up his game. And uh, the other guys, uh, Ricardo continues to produce double-doubles every game, it seems like, uh, 18 and 14. The, the, the stat line that those two players had, uh, Ricardo with 18 points and four, uh, 15 rebounds, Torrey 22 points, 15 rebounds, and then you throw Fred in there, 15.8 assists. Those are really quality, uh, productive nights for those three guys. And, uh, you know, and, and to win up there like we did, I think, was a little bit surprising because East Tennessee came in playing really good basketball, shooting uh, about 39% from the arc. We right. held them to 20, uh, was it 20, 21%. So, uh, all in all, just a really good performance. Coach, it, I, I failed to mention it on my broadcast last <coughs> night because I was so caught up in the action of the game. I don't know if your bench was aware. Torrey Craig, 2,000 points on his career as a Spartan. Uh, I, I, I looked at it after the game and realized that. And, uh, boy, that's a milestone that very few people reach. And uh, Torrey's obviously been a great player here. And uh, I was glad to see him do it. And, you know, Nobody said anything right. about it. Uh, he didn't say anything. When the players didn't say anything to each other. He, he, it's kind of like reflective of his attitude. Let's, you know, we won the game. Let's, let's celebrate that. And I think that was kind of the way Torrey is. Coach, last night versus East Tennessee State just seemed like a strange <coughs> game. You get out to such a good start. They start to chip away. Their only lead is on a bucket right before the half. And then you, your team comes out and blitz the, blitzes them in the second half. And it's never really a close game, really down the stretch in the second half. Um, uh, a strange game a little bit in ways, but that's the way it seems to be on the road and in conference. And uh, against a good East Tennessee State team, as you said, a team that had scored 96 on Lipscomb just a couple of nights previous. Yeah, I mean, I, the ebb and flow of games varies and can be different, but I think uh, the start of the second half is one of the key periods of, of any sure. game. Absolutely. As well as the end of the first half, and they kind of got the better of us the end of the first half and cut it, took that two-point lead. But we obviously uh, came out really well, guarded well, got a lot of stops early in the uh, second half and went on a 13-0 run and gave ourselves a working margin. And then we managed to maintain that. Right. Uh, didn't, didn't have any bad spells and kept it and even increased it a little bit at times. So uh, just a really good performance. We'll take our first break here on the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show when we come back. We'll uh, take a brief look at uh, what the Lady Spartans have been up to. Also have a question or two for Coach Payne as well. That's when we return to the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show. You're listening on News Radio WORD 950 and 1330 and also watching on UpstateSpartans.com. Tweet your questions for Coach Payne or Coach George at Upstate Spartans. We'll have more Upstate Basketball Coaches Show after this. In the nation, we can't make traffic jams or love handles disappear, but you can get $100 off for every year of safe driving when you add vanishing deductible from Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. Upstate alumni receive a special discount on their auto insurance through Nationwide. For more information, call Jeff Clark at 814-3003. Optional features subject to eligibility, underwriting guidelines, review and approval. Max credit $500. Details and availability vary by state. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Are you looking for a place to make your home next year? Sign a lease on an apartment at College Point and all fees will be waived. Four bedroom apartments are just $469 a month and three bedroom units are just $495 a month. And you get to enjoy all the fun and excitement of living right next to the USC Upstate Campus. Call College Point today at 8 864-503-0333. That's 864-503-0333. College Point. Your lifestyle, your home. At Enterprise, we not only rent great cars, we sell them too. And buying from us is different than buying from anyone else. At Enterprise, we clearly mark our lowest price on every car. No games, that's the price. And every vehicle comes with a 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, limited powertrain warranty. We'll even buy it back if you're unhappy for any reason. It's like a happiness guarantee. Haggle-free buying, worry-free ownership. Let us show you what that means. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show here on News Radio WORD 950 and 1330. My name is Phil Cox, joined by the head coach of the Spartans, uh, Eddie Payne. Spartans coming off a nice road trip, <coughs> winning two of three on the road and seven uh, of their last eight to now stand at uh, 15 and 11 and 8 and 5 in the Atlantic Sun, third in the A Sun standings. Let's take a look now at what the Lady Spartans have been up to. They were riding a hot streak but have uh, dropped a couple of contests of late. They dropped a 79-66 uh, decision back on February 6th to Stetson inside the Hodge Center and then dropped uh, a close contest against Florida Gulf Coast, 76-69. to 69. Spartans came back late in the second half but weren't able to overcome probably the two best teams uh, in the conference or two of the best teams in ASUN women's basketball. Upstate now stands at 11-11, and 6-5 in the A Sun coming up next as we glance at their schedule. Let's see if we can find who the Spartans have next. They will have next ETSU inside the Hodge Center. That's coming up on Saturday, 430. You can see Tammy George's troops right here in Spartanburg. Well, Coach, uh, we always like to ask you a question or two uh, during the course of the show. And one thing we wanted to ask you about not sure if we've asked you this so far this season, but there's going to be a different conference tournament format this year. Not going to make it anymore to play. Uh, the top four seeds will host 1-8, 2-7, so on and so forth. How do you feel about that format uh, going forward? I don't like it. I don't like it. Of course, they didn't ask me if I liked it. Um, but I think players you get to tournament time, they like to go somewhere, you know, central site, it's got a tournament atmosphere. This mm -hmm. is going to be more like a single game type of deal. Uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the teams that have to travel after the first round win to, to play the semifinals. The, the winner of the semifinal game that has to travel will have two days to travel instead of just one. So it's not as bad once you get to that point. But I just think it's really difficult. Um, I, personally, I think tournament basketball uh, is really special. Um, anything can happen, and, right. and and certainly at our level, it the the season rides absolutely. On. And so, you know, if we're gonna, and we're capable of winning the thing, but it, our road to, to do it is going to be very difficult to do it, and so. I, I, I just don't like the whole concept of it, but as I said, they didn't ask me, and and I, you know I'm sure that the uh, financial considerations drove that bus. So you know, it is what it is. However, that's a, that tired old cliche, but you know we've got to deal with it, and and, and we will. Coach, one one thing we wanted to ask <coughs> you, particular to your team, it's uh, just crunching the numbers before we all went on the air. Uh, in your last eight games, seven of them being wins, you've totaled 126 assists, and that averages to about 15.7, almost 16 assists per game. And one thing about with your team, Coach, is most of the time when you think assist, you think backcourt. But your frontcourt players, especially your senior uh, seniors, Maxie and Glenn, very good at passing the basketball and dishing off. And uh, it, it just seems like when, when the scoring comes from assisted uh, on assisted plays, it just looks better, and it, it's just it, it's better for the whole scope of, of an offense. Well, <clears throat> we are a good passing team. We're willing to pass. Um, our big guys can pass, as you mentioned. Uh, very good interior passers. Uh, short type passes. You know, you're passing in the in the lane. You got guys with their hands up. Uh, you know, there's not a great deal of space. You have to. You have to be able to put a little touch on the ball a lot of times. Sometimes you have to bounce and play underneath people. Um, and both Ricardo and Jada in particular are good at that. Uh, the, another factor, Mike Buchanan, uh, for example, has great hands. Mm -hmm. He made a catch this year on a four-foot pass that got deflected by the defender. Now, for those of you who hadn't tried to catch a close-quartered pass like that, that the direction of the ball changes, that's very difficult to do. So we have some guys with good hands. Um, and we're willing to pass, and, and guys are willing to give it up. And I'll mention to you that um, there was a pro scout there last night at the game, and 
he told me after the game, he says, we passed the ball better against the zone than any team he's seen all year. So that was a kind of a nice compliment to hear. Uh, it, and, it, uh, um, and I'd like to think it's true. And, and, and our, our assist to basket ratio has been very high all year. And it was high last night. We had 19 assists on 28 uh, field goals. That's what, 65 plus right. percent. Coach, just staying on that for just a second. Um, <coughs> passing the basketball, it seems simple. It seems fundamental. But is that something you feel like maybe gets overlooked in, in levels of basketball, middle school, high school, even the college ranks, of how to correctly pass the basketball? I mean, sometimes passes are are soggy or weak or not as strong as they need to be. But like you said last night, I noticed it uh, from broadcasting courtside, especially on the perimeter. I mean, those pass, passes being zipped, I mean, in right into the chest of a, of, of, of a teammate. Well, you alluded to youth basketball. There's a lot of things that get skipped over in youth basketball nowadays, you know, but passing is a fundamental skill. There's technique involved and, you know, we use a little rule that we try to, you know, you use air passes on the perimeter because they're quicker. You use bounce passes in, cor in areas that lead to baskets mm -hmm. where the ball has been able to be caught and laid up or, or maybe in tight. Um, so the, the technique has something to do with it. Um, and um, our guys, well, you know, but probably a bigger function of good passing teams has to do with making good decisions. Um, every once in a while you see a guy pass the ball to somebody who's guarded. <laughs> and so you wonder, now what did he see there? Why did he throw that right. pass? So um, sometimes, and then the final concept that, that we drive home all the time is make the easy pass. Don't try to make a hard pass. Throw the ball, the guy's open. Somebody has to move to get guard him, which creates maybe another another easier pass. If you make a hard pass, a difficult to complete pass, chances are the next pass after that's going to be hard too. Mm. So if you make an easy pass, you, generally speaking, you've got an easier second pass. And um, all those different things, our players have, you know, we preach it, we work, you know, we. You don't necessarily work on all those mm -hmm. things. You talk about it. You show them on tape and those kinds of things. And, and we, we've got a good passing team. We'll take another break here on the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show. When we return, we'll preview next couple of Spartans opponents, that being Stetson and Florida Gulf Coast. Those games will be right here from the Hodge Center. That's when we return. You're listening to the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show on News Radio WORD 950 and 1330 and watching on UpstateSpartans.com. Tweet your questions for Coach Payne or Coach George <coughs> at Upstate Spartans. We'll okay, have Ryan, we have one more break. Is that right? Show after this. After this one? Reason why US yes, Upstate one more break after this one. One more break. Yep. Um, so you got two more segments. And um, you are coming off, um, which is hotter than you. Nursing. Um, he's, he's louder. Compete in NCAA okay. Division. I don't know if you can move the mic a little bit up your lapel or whatever. All right. Learn more. Um, and also, do you keep your headphones on during the break? I've got them right here next to me. We're excellent. Okay, good. Because I feel like um, if you were listening to the stream, you're on an eight-second delay. So, okay. The way I don't know if that's why you came back a little late last time. Okay. It's coming again. So, just to let you know. We, the fans, Wait, must stop God. this wave and protect our coke. It's still coming. Cheerleaders, fire the t-shirt guns. Buzzer guy, distract them with buzzing. Wolf, howl. Ooh. Hold on! Looks like we did it. Nice job, everybody. Coca-Cola. Open happiness. In the nation, they go by guardian, lifesaver, and friend. At Nationwide Insurance, we just call them agents. We put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation that cares. Nationwide is on your side. All USC Upstate alumni receive a special discount on their auto insurance through Nationwide. Call Jeff Clark at 814-3003. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. Welcome back to the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show. Phil Cox along with Eddie Payne. We are not at Buffalo Wild Wings tonight. Instead, we're coming to you from the Hodge Center 
here in Spartanburg, the site of Upstate's next two games, first versus Stetson and then Florida Gulf Coast on Saturday. Uh, coach the Hatters, a uh, new head coach, and um, have kind of a little bit, they lost probably their best player last year in Peg, but a close game down there the first time around against these guys, and uh, Stetson always brings a challenge when, 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 when you play them. Well, I've been watching tape all day, and they're they're impressive. They're 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 much better than your, their record would lead you to believe. Um, Corey Williams has done a good job. They're bought into their system. They're playing hard. They're defending better than the first time we played them. Um, just uh, playing well. Uh, Willie Green is a guy that's really hurting people. He hurt us. He had 24 points against us. We've got to do a much better job against him, or we can't win. I mean, and. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're we off today. We didn't practice today after that grueling stretch. Right. So we'll have one day to prep for them. And, uh, of course, that's not necessarily unusual this time of year. So we'll have to get ready for them. And then the next game is Florida Gulf Coast. So we have, it's going to be a challenging weekend. It'll be 7 o'clock start for uh, Stetson and then 2 o'clock or 7 o'clock on Saturday versus Florida Gulf Coast. Um, Coach, Obviously, two tough games against those guys <laughs> down there on the first go around. You uh, had chances to win both games, but you'll get them coming back here. Um, uh, obviously, your team has changed a lot, and, and things change throughout the course of the year. Um, but you'll have a home court advantage. You played very, very well at home this year, only losing one game. And I know your guys will be ready to be back playing in front of their home crowd. Yeah, I think they will be. I think they, you know, you mentioned seven out of eight, and we, I think we've won four out of five without tie. So our players are gaining confidence, and, um, and and we've gotten better. So, but as I said, Stetson's gotten better too. So, conference play, you can see it pretty much any time. You know, last night West Virginia absolutely throttled yeah. Iowa State. You know, you wouldn't have thought that. So, you know, it, it's it's the way of, the way of the beast in, in conference in February in particular. So we'll have to be ready to play and. But I think our guys will be taking a little bit closer look at Stetson Upstate. Ne Upstate's next opponent. They're seven and 17, five and seven in the league. Uh, dropped three of their last four, but won their last one, 73-68 uh, at home against Jacksonville. Hatters have struggled on the road this season, just one and ten. The lone victory being at Kennesaw State. Coach Payne mentioned Willie Green. He leads the Hatters with 14 points. Brian Pegg, brother of former uh, Stetson Hatter Adam Pegg, uh, is their leading rebounder at almost seven rebounds a game. So we will take another break, our final break here on the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show, and. Uh, let you know kind of what, what the weather may be like and kind of how to stay up to speed on how you can find out if there are any changes with Upstate's uh, games in the next uh, couple of days where you can go and where you can find out all that information. We'll close it out when we come back here from the Hodge Center. You're listening to the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show on uh, WORD and watching on UpstateSpartans.com. Tweet your questions for Coach Payne or Coach George at Upstate Sports. <coughs> Is Bill Brett still on the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show? After Who's this. That?
USC Upstate, where excellence expands across the upstate of South Carolina and beyond. Welcome back to the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show. Here as we uh, close it out here from the Hodge Center, Upstate will have, as we said, two home games coming up on Thursday at 7 o'clock versus Stetson, as we said, and then Saturday is a 2 o'clock start. We told you wrong against Florida Gulf Coast. Um, Coach, obviously, um, two big games, and um, you know, with with an experienced a team as you have, um, do you feel like you have to prepare? tell your guys or inform your guys of how big these games are or you just kind of let them go out and play they, they know that these games mean a lot especially especially for your seniors I mean the, the, after uh, after this weekend only one more only one more home game for Ricardo and Baba and Tori and Josh. I don't really tell them how important the games are they know they, they, they know more about the stand than I, we just try to talk about how to prepare and uh, how, to, how to think and how to approach it and try to get them thinking the, the right way because, um, you know, as you start thinking about too much, you could, you know, pressure or whatever. I just want them to be focused in on their job and be prepared to do their job on a play-by-play -play basis. And, and, and when you do that, you have games like you had uh, probably last night in, in Northern Kentucky where you you know, you play the same. Doesn't matter if things are going bad or if things are going well. You don't ever change. And um, generally speaking, when you can do that, you're performing on a more consistent basis and therefore a more effective basis. Well, we will. We hope that you join us on Thursday night, 6:45, with the Coca-Cola pregame show, 7 o'clock with the tip, and then on Saturday, 1:45, with the Coke pregame show, and 2 o'clock with the tip. And then we'll be right back here. Well, not here again, hopefully at Buffalo Wild Wings if the weather cooperates, but you can listen the same way, 9.50 and 13.30, and then watch again here on UpstatesSpartans.com. Coach, best of luck to you on Thursday and Saturday, and then uh, we'll be back here at, back at Buffalo Wild Wings, hopefully celebrating two more wins. Okay, thanks, Bill. That's, that'll do it for this edition of the Upstate Basketball Coaches Show. Again, 6.45 with the pregame show on Thursday from the Hodge Center. Until then... Have a great uh, week and stay safe. We'll talk to you Thursday from the Hodge. At Enterprise, we not only rent great cars, we sell them too.